In 2016, my first feature film Ungeheuer hit theaters in my home country, Austria. This film was a labor of love and was a no-budget feature film. I used mostly my own equipment to shoot it and amateur actors to get it done. In this video, I want to take a look at the financing and distribution and all in all the financial situation on when you want to produce a no-budget feature film. So if you are in the process of producing a no-budget feature film, maybe my numbers and my story can help you on your own journey. But if you are more interested in the production of the film, when it comes to the technical stuff and so on, I would recommend to check out my other video I did on this topic on my channel. Before we dive into it, I want to say that this is my personal experience. Other people's experience might vastly differ and it's just a very small frame in which this all was happening, which is 2016 in rural Austria. So it is possible to have enormous success with no budget films, no doubt with that. And other people might have similar experiences or very bad financial experiences where they lost all their money. This is just my journey and I just want to give you an impression on what can happen if you produce a no-budget feature film. It's my story, but it doesn't mean it can't be exciting, so let's get into it. First, let's talk budget. How much did I spend on this movie? So, as I already said, most people were amateurs who were just eager and motivated to be part of a movie which is great and I'm endlessly thankful for that. But two of my main actors still got an allowance because they were on so many shooting days and that of course was a part of the budget and costumes of course were also a big part of that. But we shot 18 days and after a shooting day you are hungry and want to eat. So the biggest part of the budget was food of course and catering and that's very very important. This all amounted to a budget of 4,300 euros or 5,100 dollars. I was only able to make the movie for such a low price because most of the actors and the locations were free and I didn't account it for my own work which was two months of full-time work and also the producing and the writing. But the expenses of making a movie doesn't end with the production of the film itself. You also have to get the butts into the seats. So I spent another chunk of money for ads and production of DVDs and Blu-rays. After that, I have to say, I spent too much money on DVDs and Blu-rays. I already had experience with making documentaries and selling those on DVDs. but. I haven't thought about the possibility that people might not want to buy as many uh, feature films on DVD and Blu-ray. So I spent too much on it, but all in all the ads and the Blu-ray production cost me around 700 euros. So the final production cost of the movie was around 5,000 euros, which is roughly $5,900. But the big question is, did this movie even break even? To answer that, we have to look at financing. As a student that I was at the time, I surely didn't have 5,000 euros to spend on a project that might fail. So I went to many companies near me and asked for sponsorships. And I also asked for some cultural funds in my hometown and another town where I shot a couple of scenes for this film. And that all ended up being 3000 euros. Of course I must say that I am lucky that I was able to get all that money but I knocked on many many doors and it took a loads 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 of tiring hours till I get all that money and it was worth it and I was able to have some money left so I can produce the movie as good as I wanted it to be. And then the movie came out. I released the movie in a tour fashion. I spoke to cinema owners and to cinema chains and also showed the movie in town halls, for example. So I was able to make a tour through Austria and show the movie as often as possible. I didn't sell any tickets, 
except for the cinemas of course i just relied on voluntary donations it wouldn't have changed anything money wise it was just easier for me in this situation i was also able to get some newspapers involved to create some local bus and of course i also spent some money on ads and some uh, posters that i put up so there was a little bit of buzz going on when this movie came out in the area where i live and after each showing of the movie i sold the dvds and the blu-rays on location in the end 850 people visited the showings of my film for austrian standards this is on the lower end but for an independent movie this is actually pretty good i was able to sell 60 dvds and 15 blu-rays on those showings and all the revenue combined from this tour was 4300 euros so even without the sponsorships i was almost able to break even on this film but the story doesn't end there after the film tour of course i went digital and since this movie is in austrian german and it's a genre movie and it didn't have any festival pedigree the movie wasn't picked up by any big distributor so i went the self-distribution route i went to amazon video direct a film hub and a german youtube channel called netzkino and after five years of having this movie distributed online this all added up to a sum of an astounding 470 euros so in the end if we combine the sponsorships the funding the revenue from the cinema tour and the digital distribution minus the cost of the film and the ads i ended up earning 3200 euros with this movie this is neither bad or good but i heard so many stories about filmmakers losing all their money on their small films of course it's not a classical success story that's true but looking back at it this film was a very tough sell it's in austrian german it's a medieval crime film and it didn't feature any known actors so i would say i'm happy with these results but i think there is a very important lesson for every filmmaker who wants to make films locally and distribute them in the area where they live you don't need to get to the big distributors or go the internet digital distribution route but you just need uh, some small theaters or a big enough room with nice presentation equipment to get some revenue because most of the money i earned with this film was showing it locally in town halls and small cinemas blu-rays and dvds are of course nice revenue streams but nowadays it might be even tougher to sell them since many viewers don't have players at home anymore and i also completely miscalculated the amount of the blu-rays and dvds that i needed 60 dvds and 15 blu-rays even after selling them locally in stores is no number to be proud of but if you want you can still make dvds and blu-rays yourself i wouldn't go the route to let them be made by a professional manufacturer i think it would be good enough to make them yourself but i think the reason for that is because a fictional content is a much tougher sell for a local audience they want to see documentaries for example i just shot the documentary about the neighbor town and sold 150 units over the course of two years and lastly streaming well that's a big downer uh, even after selling the movie for a very small price on the biggest online platform ever which is amazon and over 40,000 clicks on a youtube channel i wasn't able to get much revenue off of it it might have resulted in a higher revenue if i didn't have the showings but i personally wouldn't bet on that of course you always can go viral but the chance for that is very slim and i can't tell you if it works for you i don't maybe don't have the talent for that but in the end the movie only made 10 percent of its budget back over streaming 
The movie still makes a couple of bucks every year, but it's more or less the end of the story. Maybe this was useful to you if you are thinking about self-distributing your own no-budget film. I learned a lot doing this. Success is uh, not something that just comes like that. You have to put amounts of work and sweat and tears and you just want to make it worthwhile. I know this movie is flawed and it was a tough sell and it was never meant to be the next paranormal activity. You might think otherwise and have other experiences, but I think this is a good example on how the distribution and the financing can happen for a no-budget feature production. Don't expect your movie to explode and do your work to get the people watch your film. It's always interesting to hear stories from other filmmakers, but the only stories you hear most of the time are those of people who had massive amount of success, so I thought I'd chime in. But most importantly, I hope this video gave you motivation that you go out and produce your own first feature film. I was 23 years old when I started producing this movie and now six years later I am now able to produce the next films since I've always been busy working as a videographer. It's a challenge and there will be days where the self-doubt kicks in and you don't want to keep making this movie but in the end it's worth it. Because even if you don't make it in the film business, you have made something that you can be proud of. You made a piece of art that will still be something that you have made even without the big success. So let me know where you are on your journey to becoming a filmmaker or being a filmmaker in the comments down below. And if you are interested in my journey and the movies I will produce in the future, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I hope you have a nice day and create something extraordinary.